Exactly. I mean, but you have been expanding beyond Asia and yes. you were quite a hit in the US. Yeah. Yes, we were. Yeah. So we had our first US, uh, US event in Denver, Colorado, a month before the Nuggets, you know, won the NBA championship. So it was great timing. <laughs> but yeah, that was a sold out event. You know, it broke all records in the US on our streaming platform, uh, Amazon Prime Video. And I think that event really sort of showed us uh, that we not only have a right to play, we have a clear right to win in the US. So we are going to be having more events uh, in the US next year. And we're also looking to expand the partnership with Amazon. But you know, to be okay. honest, it's not that surprising. Martial arts, you know, has been practiced, you know, by many people around the world. It is from Asia, uh, but you walk around the streets of New York, London, Doha, you know, where I was at last week, mm -hmm. uh, you will see a martial arts gym, you will see a kickboxing school, right? You will see a, a karate uh, or judo uh, dojo, right? Um, so martial arts is enjoyed by many, many people around the world. It is practiced by many people around the world. So while we're based in Asia, it is no surprise that we are expanding in the US, in the Middle East, in Europe, in Africa, in many parts of the world. You just mentioned Doha. You've signed an MOU with the Qataris. Right. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, we signed an MOU with uh, Qatar Media City that actually is an existing partner. So this is an extension of another MOU uh, that we signed last year to bring our live events to Qatar. Uh, we have a two to three year relationship now uh, uh, with Qatar. Uh, QIA, uh, the Sovereign Wealth Fund, invested in one. They actually led our last funding round about 18 months ago. And since then, you know, we have gotten more and more, I guess, deeply networked, you know, in the, in the Qatari ecosystem. Uh, we have signed with BN Sports, a uh, Middle East uh, broadcast deal, one of the big, you know, sports broadcasters in the world. They are, you know, a Qatar owned. Uh, we've also signed, uh, as I mentioned, with Qatar Media City to do our reality uh, programming uh, in Doha. So actually, we have our own version of The Apprentice. Uh, it's on Netflix. So season one was uh, produced largely in Singapore, but season two was partly produced uh, in Doha. Uh, because of the partnership and now we're going to be bringing our uh, crown jewel the live event uh, to Doha mm. and it could happen as soon as this year and I, I want to talk about you know your business as a whole in terms mm. of profitability right now you very much it sounds like are focused on expanding those markets and getting yeah. a foothold yeah. um, in the US of course in the Middle East yeah. um, and to really <laughs> cement that global position yeah. right now so yeah. when do you anticipate that you'll, you'll start yeah. to reach that profitability no exactly to your point because we're expanding globally and because the opportunity is so large like we obviously will have to keep investing right uh, in the business the US for instance is a clear investment market um, but in terms of profitability I think we've come on record to say this before we expect to be profitable within call it two to three years two to three years uh, if you look at our revenue, you look at everything, our metrics, everything is up and to the right. Even through the pandemic, you know, viewership and revenue were up. Uh, so assuming that March continues, and look, the sports business is one of operating leverage. Once you have the asset, you have incumbency, you have the fans, it, ha it takes on a life of its own, right? The incremental, there's not much incremental cost in trying to win that incremental dollar because the asset, the brand, the popularity and the fandom is already there, mm. right? And all sports properties go through this journey.